What up, fight fans? Main man, me, man, back at it. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. It is a pleasure. It is a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be back amongst you and to talk about the sport that I love so dearly, boxing. As you guys know, I've been off the air for a little while because, quite honestly, boxing kind of slowed down to me. It's, it's uh... Uh, and nothing major been going on, nothing that hasn't been talked about already. Every major fight that's going on now, I pretty much already covered it in, in previous videos. I'm not one of those guys that's going to go over every little sentence, every little detail that comes out about a fight. So, uh, boxing kind of slowed down. The Birdo Mayweather thing just turned me off so much, I just kind of shut down for a little while. But I am back, ladies and gentlemen, and the first subject back, I want to get back into this Andre Ward, Sergey Kovalev thing. Now... This fight, this is a possible fight that has to fucking happen, ladies and gentlemen, for many, many different reasons, and we will get into those reasons. But this fight, man, it has to fucking happen, y'all. Andre Ward, man, you know, believe it or not, I've been looking at you guys' comments, I've been getting a lot of messages from you guys, and I've been on different blogs and stuff like that, and I've been taking, basically keeping a pulse in, of the fans, and just kind of see how people feel about this fight. And believe it or not, the consensus that I'm getting is a lot of people believe that Andre Ward is actually afraid of Sergey Kovalev. He's afraid of the boogeyman. He's afraid of the, the most destructive force at light heavyweight, Sergey Kovalev, right? Andre Ward is so afraid of this man. Ladies and gentlemen, why do we do this to ourselves? Have we not learned anything yet? Especially from a guy like Andre Ward, man, who I admire and respect for many different reasons. But we'll get into those things. Uh, the thing is, with well, Andre Ward, ladies and gentlemen, why haven't we learned? 28-0, and 0, undefeated, 15 knockouts, right? The man has not lost since he's been 13 years old in the amateurs, okay? How many years ago was that? Man, it's... It, it, He's a gold medalist, ladies and gentlemen. He's an Olympic gold medalist. The man does not know how to lose. But yet, people put this thing on him. Oh, he's so afraid of Sergey Kovalev because he doesn't want to fight Sergey Kovalev. Well, quite honestly, ladies and gentlemen, if we know anything about Andre Ward, we know that in Andre Ward's mind, to Andre Ward, uh, he is the ultimate ASAP. All right? The man has never lost. All right, he went through his division. He's pound for pound rated by second pound for pound by most uh, boxing circles and boxing purists. All right, he has high accolades. In, in his mind, he is a side, and he ain't going to let no one treat him otherwise. We've seen this from Andre Ward for years. He has gone as far as to sue his own promoter. He's gone as far as to remove himself from boxing for years and years. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Andre Ward is not going to be treated unfairly by no one in boxing. No matter what it may cost him. Some may say it's smart, some may say it's stupid, whatever the fact. It's the cause that he believes in, and he believes in his mind. He's earned the right to call himself a side. He's earned the right. He's the former lineal champion who no one beat him for it. You know what I'm saying? But he had to vacate because of his inactivity he in his mind has not been defeated so he ain't going to let no one be the the a side over him if he can help it and he is going to get his way in his these fights now i said that ladies and gentlemen because we know sergey kovalev fights at the 175 pound division andre ward campaigns at let you know legally I guess at 168 though his last fight was at a catch weight of 172 he fought Paul Smith now that to me shows honestly graduation because that was his first fight back after being out of the ring for quite some time and he took a guy that wasn't even in his weight class he was a, he was at he fights out of the 175 weight class but he met him at a catch weight now, granted, Paul Smith was coming off losses. He lost twice back-to-back -back losses to Arthur Abrams. And that was, you know, he was probably a depleted fighter from those two fights. But that was Andre Ward's first fight back in quite some time, so we gave him a pass for it, correct? We gave him a pass for that. Same way a lot of, I did, and a lot of other people they had to do for Kell Brook. But we gave him a pass for that. And on top of that, he has worked, you can gradually see he really possibly wants to work himself up to 175 
According to Virgil Hunter, the trainer of Andre Ward, and I quote, uh, heads off to Dante's Boxing Nation for that interview, and I quote, I am not going to fail him and put him in a situation where the playing field is not even. The man, last fight, he fought Paul Smith. Paul Smith came in at 176 pounds on fight night. Andre Ward came in at 171 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. Some may say, well, what is three or four pounds, right? But the fact of the matter is the man is working his way up there. Give him time. Be patient, people. And I think this fight will happen. It better happen. We'll get to that. But it, I think this fight will happen. According to, Sergei, according to Sergei Kovalev, I'm open to fight anyone, including Ward. Everybody, you know, I've heard Andre Ward mention this in interviews. Uh, everyone wants to be, he's the boogeyman. He killed someone in the ring. And he, you know, he, he breaks bones. He does this, he does that. Well, you got to understand who Andre Ward is, folks. Have we forgot? This is a man who knows how to neutralize his power. This is a man who knows how to take, who fight fighters, really see their weaknesses and really exploits it against them. All right. I don't remember the last time Sergey Kovalev really went to the deep waters, fighting a pace fighter like Andre Ward. He fights guys who were standing in front of him, and he may go into the deep waters with those guys. But can he go in the deep waters with a guy who's going to be moving, who's going to be elusive, who's going to stick and move? May not have the power he has, but skill level wise, it's going to be an interesting fight. Has Kovalev faced a guy like that? Right? We talk about now let's let's jump on the Sergey Kovalev side. Sergey Kovalev, twenty eight and 0, 25 knockouts, one draw. Very impressive fighter. Has basically every major belt at his division, with the exception of the WBC, the lineal championship, which we know was held by Stevens. And Adonis Stevens is not uh we some people want to put it on Kovalev. Some people want to put it on Stevenson's. In my opinion, it was Stevenson's who made the first network move first. But the politics of boxing is not allowing that fight between those two. All right? That is the only viable fight outside of Andre Ward that I think Sergey Kovalev really should take. But Sergey Kovalev is not for the guy uh, that's, you know... We have this thing as fans, when we see a dude come along and he's just beating, knocking everybody down, he's knocking everybody out, he's showing tremendous power, we have a bandwagon complex where everyone wants to jump on that bandwagon because this guy's knocking everybody out, you know? Sergey Kovalev, though, has not been in there with an elite fighter, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not talking John Pascal. I'm not talking Bernard Hopkins. No offense to Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins is a legendary fighter. No offense, but at this particular point in his career, he is not the top-graded elite fighter. I mean, he's just not. You know, he's just not. He has a good game plan. He does good strategies, but he's not the elite guy that he once was. You know? Sergey Kovalev does not have that guy. The Cleverly fight, nah, most people don't even know who Cleverly was. You know what I mean? I mean, the Muhammadiyya fight, no one, I mean... <laughs> He does not have that guy. He doesn't. And he needs that guy. And with the exception of going up possibly up to cruiserweight, I don't see who it could be that outside of Stevenson, which, like I said, the politics of boxing are not, is not allowing. Kovalev fights for HBO. Stevenson is a Heyman fighter who fights on Showtime. You can imagine the clusterfuck that would be. Don't see it happening. Ward is the only viable guy in Kovalev's radar that will give him that high-profile fight that he needs, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when you listen to Sergey Kovalev talk about Andre Ward, uh, I'm not going to say he doesn't respect Andre Ward. He does. I mean, but it just seems as if he's not that into him. You know what I'm saying? He's not that into him. And uh, Sergey Kovalev's thing is, is he's only into the guy he's fighting. You know what I mean? But... Given that he's never had to fight Andre Ward or has been mentioning much to him, you know, he hasn't really studied the guy. I don't know if the man really knows what he's in for. You know what I'm saying? Andre Ward is not going to let nobody dictate to him what weight to fight at, what belt to fight for, when to fight. That's, he doesn't see himself in that light as a regular guy. 
He sees himself as a guy who paid all his dues, reached number two pound for pound. Some may whisper and say number one pound for pound. Who knows? Some may say third. But he, he sees himself as an elite cut of the cloth, as one of the top dogs out here. And he ain't going to let no Sergey Kovalev, no Gennady Golovkin, or nobody dictate to him who, what, when, where, why. Now, what Andre Ward tends to forget that he lacks the popularity. We see Rock Nation Sports boxing whom Andre Ward fights for, trying to prop up the image of Andre Ward. Uh, you know, Co uh, uh, Miguel Cotto and Sal Canelo Alvarez have a big, big fight upcoming in November, so they're promoting that fight, and we see Andre Ward tagging along at a lot of the press conferences. We see him and Cotto together at press conferences uh, and at, at, you know, on radio shows together and different things like that. So they're trying to pop, prop up Andre Ward's popularity using Miguel Cotto, who's a very popular boxer. I guess that's a smart strategy. They're in the same stable. Why not? But the fact is that Andre Ward, that for once, for some reason, doesn't hold much weight with Ward. We've seen his last fight with Paul Smith take place in his hometown, where, honestly, he didn't fill up the arena. Now, given Paul Smith does not have the biggest fan base, so maybe they wasn't going to fill up no arena anyway. But to these other fighters, they feel as though they respect Andre Ward skill level-wise and what he's done in boxing, but they, you know... They, they feel like they still can kind of sun him because of his popularity thing. We've seen Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. do it. We've seen Chad Dawson do it. Even though Andre Ward defeated Chad Dawson, Chad Dawson got everything he fucking wanted to come down and wait to fight Andre Ward. And Ward was the champion. You know, but... A lot of these fighters like this try to sun Andre Ward. And now I think he has a real bitter complex about it. After going through what he went through with his promotional company, you know, with, with, with Dan Goosen and all of them, RIP, going, you know, with all the stuff he went through with that, it kind of made him in a, in just, he's not going to let nobody bully him around and tell him what to do or when to do it. He feel like he, he whether the other fighter admits it or not, or any other person for that matter, he sees himself as the A-list, and it's on his terms in a way. And if he doesn't see that, we don't see the enthusiasm for a fight. We don't see him really trying to make fights. He's just like, whatever, man. <laughs> but don't say he's scared, man. Don't say he's scared. But, both, 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 but for both fighters, it will be the highest profile fight. You look, you know, on Ward's end, what is he going to do? Chavez Jr., Heyman fighter, you know what I mean? Now he's without Heyman. I don't see that happening because we know Ward fights with Rock Nation. Jay-Z and Heyman don't get along. Stevenson, don't see that happening. He's a Showtime Heyman fighter as well. Won't work for Andre Ward. Frotch is talking retirement. Groves has a fight with uh, Badu Jack on the upcoming. What do we got? Who we got here? Shooting off? Shooting off is the, what is this, mandatory, I think, to that WBA title? I don't think no one really wants to see that. That's not going to do major numbers in, in what's, especially at this point in Andre Ward's career, ladies and gentlemen. What is he, 33 years old? You know what I'm saying? Kovalev, he's in his mid-30s also. These guys don't have time to waste. You know what I'm saying? And it just makes sense that this fight should happen. But for all you people out there who are doubting Andre Ward, just know the kind of fighter that you're dealing with before you say he's scared. Because I don't think Andre Ward is afraid of nobody. SOG ain't afraid ain't of ducking or dodging anyone. I really feel as that. And I, I'm the first one to, t to really run to a microphone and say who's ducking and dodging. But I do not believe that SOG in any way is ducking and dodging Sergey Kovalev. I just think at the end of the day, He's going to try to make sure he comes out on top in negotiations. He's not going to be rushed to the 175-pound division. We've seen what happened when Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. moved up in weight, and he got destroyed by Fonafar, where Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s power did not convert and go up in weight with him to that one set. With, what they, they fought at a catch weight. It was 172, 173. I forgot what they fought at. 
but it didn't go up to that division. Or did he fight him at full fledged 175? I forgot. But Chavez Jr. didn't carry it up to that division. And he didn't have the skill level to survive in that fight. And we've seen what happened. Now, Ward has the skill level. May not have the power. But he does have the skill level, ladies and gentlemen. So, it's rightfully smart for him to know what his body can and cannot take. Alright? It's rightfully so. But to say he's scared, this is the man who beat Carl Frotch in the Super 6 Championship, ladies and gentlemen, with one fucking arm. Go back and watch that fight. He was only fighting with one arm, mainly that fight. And you're going to say he's scared? This fight can be built up to something big for Andre Ward, possibly the biggest fight of his career. Kovalev holds, what, three belts? <laughs> he holds like every major belt at 175 with the exception of the WBC that's held by Donna Stevenson. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight can be huge. This fight, what he's, he holds the WBA, he holds the IBF, he holds the WBO. Those are the major belts with the exception of the WBC. This can be legacy defining for both fighters. This fight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this fight has to happen. Until the next video, it's your main man, Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget I'm on Twitter at MadeMan511. Don't forget Facebook, Main Man, Made Man Boxing Forum. We're having a great time. Come check us out. But until the next video. Yeah. And for all you people out there. Oh, Andre Ward doesn't want to fight Sergey Kovalev, but he'll go and fight little Gennady Golovkin, correct? Let me just say this and hopefully put a silver bullet into this. Gennady Golovkin versus Andre Ward, in my opinion, isn't realistic. It's not going to happen. All right? It's not going to happen. There's too many variables and tangibles in politics that will prevent that fight from happening. These are two fighters that campaign at two different divisions. You got Gennady Golovkin, who's basically been the guy at middleweight for the last year or two. And he's done basically every major thing at middleweight with the exception of winning that lineal title. In which we see Canelo Alvarez, I've made videos about this in the past, come from a division he's never even fought at 160. And he's going to be fighting for the 160 WBC title at a catchweight. <laughs> but we know that Gennady Golovkin would love to get the winner of that fight. Whether it's Cotto, whether it's Canelo, doesn't matter. He won against the winner of that fight. So he's waiting on the winner of that fight. You think he'll take Andre Ward in between waiting on that fight? Huh? Hmm? You don't think that now, though Andre Ward, what he stated, that he will come down to 164 in order to possibly challenge Gennady Golovkin? Or no, Gennady Golovkin challenged Andre Ward to come down to 164 to fight. And they can make something happen. And Ward refused. Ward, once again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about he's not for one, let no one bully him around and tell him who, what, when, where, how. And for also, I'm going to take Virgil Hunter's defense because I think it makes perfect sense. He stated that when Gennady Golovkin called out Chavez Jr., he said he, he will fight Chavez Jr. at the 168 division. Now, when he calls out Andre Ward, Andre Ward has to meet him at 164, right? And he stated that Andre Ward never... That's like saying Andre Ward going to 175, calling out a Donna Stevenson or, 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 you know, a Pascal or a Bernard Hopkins and saying he won't fight Sergey Kovalev. It's the same fucking thing. I agree with that. I agree with that. And who the fuck is Gennady Golovkin to be telling the number of possible number two pound for pound fighter to come down and wait and fight me at a catch weight? They be trying to sun Andre Ward, man.